Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very good day to everyone. So today I will be giving you a lecture on malignant tumor of skin. So as a customary, uh, I would like to share you some life lessons. Uh, this is a quote uh, said by late Steve Jobs during his commencement speech in Stanford University in 2005. Uh, in that speech, he said this quote, stay hungry, stay foolish. So uh, why is it important for us? Because in medical world, uh, the knowledge is always updating. So whatever I said to you today is a, a standard of practice uh, for today, but it might not be as such uh, in the future when you are uh, practicing later on. So please uh, update yourself with the new knowledge. Don't just study to pass the exam. So uh, these are the contents of my lecture. First, we start out with some introduction. Then we go to the pre-malignant lesion. Then uh, some classification of epidermal and dermal tumor. And uh, to the two most common uh, keratinocytic lesion, uh, squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma. So as an introduction, skin is the largest organ in our body. It has three main layers, epidermis, dermis and subcutis. So the most common tumor of the skin is actually epidermal or keratinocytic tumor. Uh, so before we start to know what is the pathology of the skin, we must first know the normal histology of skin. So the skin uh, has, as I said earlier, three main layers, uh, epidermis, dermis, and the here is subcutis. So for epidermis, uh, you have the outermost layer is the basket with uh, keratin. Uh, here we have epidermal layer. Epidermal layer usually they, they have this uh, maturation start uh, with uh, with granular layer here and the basal layer uh, at the bottom part. So after the bottom part of the epidermis, there is a ep the more epidermal jun the more epidermal junction, and below that is a papillary dermis. Uh, then you go a bit deeper, it, it is called reticular dermis. In the reticular dermis, you have uh, soft tissue here uh, and you have eccrine ducts and uh, sometimes you have uh, sebaceous glands and deeper area, you can see eccrine gland and some uh, adipositic tissue, uh, this uh, adipositic tissue here, uh, or also known as fat tissue and deeper part, uh, you have subcutaneous layer here is a medium sized vessel uh, the smaller uh, vessel is uh, can be seen at a reticular dermis as you can see in this uh, histology okay so uh, and in any uh, organ or system in our body the widely used classification for the tumor is WHO classification so these are the WH, this is a WHO classification of skin tumor, uh, late, latest updated in 2017. So the first is keratinocytic or epidermal tumor. Second one is melanocytic tumor. Third one is appendageal tumor. Uh, fourth one is tumor of hematopoietic and lymphoid origin. The fifth is soft tissue tumor. So, uh, usually during undergraduate, we focus on the keratinocytic tumor as well as melanocytic tumor. Uh, but today, I will be touching also a bit on classification of appendageal tumor. And uh, for melanocytic tumor, I will be touching it on the next lecture later on. Okay, for keratinocytic or epidermal tumor, uh, you have uh, benign stimulant. Uh, carcinoma precursor, uh, carcinoma in situ, uh, squamous, uh, usually it's a squamous cell carcinoma in situ, and uh, also carcinoma. So for malignant lesion, here is only carcinoma, but I will be explaining a bit on the precursor lesion as well as uh, squamous cell carcinoma in situ. For benign stimulants, I believe it's already been touched uh, on in previous lecture, uh, benign tumor of skin. So, however, uh, just to give you the brief classification, the benign stimulant include Veruca. Veruca is, uh, can be divided into three uh, variants, which is Veruca vulgaris, Veruca plantaris, Veruca plana. Uh, each has a different site uh, predilection, 
and different uh, histological feature. Uh, and then you have benign acanthoma or keratosis. The most common one is seborrheic keratosis. Less common one, solar lentigo, latent tenus like keratosis, clear cell acanthoma, warty dyskeratoma, and other benign keratosis. For carcinoma precursor, the one uh, known uh, is pre premalignant uh, precursor is premalignant keratosis, which can be divided into three: actinic, arsenical, and pulvar keratosis. And then you have uh, squamous cell carcinoma in situ. And also, this uh, the main bulk of the lecture is uh, squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma. Uh, in this classification, it uh, it also include Merkel cell carcinoma. However, I won't be touching this uh, topic, uh, this entity, because I think it's uh, it's more on the postgraduate uh, level. For your level, I think uh, squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma is a must know for a tumor of skin. So we go go on to malignant appendageal tumor. So malignant appendageal tumor you can divide into malignant tumor with apocrine and eccrine differentiation, malignant tumor with follicular differentiation, malignant tumor with sebaceous differentiation and also site specific tumor. So uh, there there are uh, benign uh, malignant appendageal tumor, uh, but I won't be covering in this lecture. So, uh, just a brief, uh, brief uh, introduction on uh, the appendageal tumor, uh, which the first one is uh, malignant tumor with apocrine and eccrine differentiation. So, for malignant tumor on this uh, apocrine and eccrine differentiation, you have an exocarcinoma. Uh, NOS, uh, microcystic adnexal carcinoma, uh, malignant neoplasm arising from spira adenoma, cylindroma, spira adenocylindroma, malignant mixed tumor, hydra adenocarcinoma, mucinous carcinoma, endocrine mucin producing sweat gland carcinoma, digital papillary adenocarcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma, apocrine carcinoma, squamoid eccrine duct carcinoma, syringosis adenoma carcinoma proliferum, secretory carcinoma, cribriform carcinoma, and signal ring of cystocytoid carcinoma. And then in the malignant appendageal tumor, also you have malignant tumor with follicular differentiation. Uh, you have this is uh, in this uh, entity you have pilometrical carcinoma, proliferating trichelamal tumor, trichoblastic carcinoma, or carcinosarcoma, and also you have trichelamal carcinoma. So malignant tumor with follicular differentiation means they have this uh, a bit of uh, hair follicular differentiation. Lah. So each of these tumor has a uh, evidence of uh, some follicular differentiation. And you have site specific tumor, uh, which is uh, for malignant is a memory paget disease, extra memory paget disease adenocarcinoma of anogenital memory-like glands. For memory paget disease, it's usually, uh, as uh, it's said, it's memory. Memory means it's a, uh, involving paget disease involving the breast. Extra memory paget disease is paget disease uh, involving uh, outside the breast, usually in the vulva. And uh, this anogenital is basically in the anal and genital region. So uh, in neoplastic process of the skin, Usually, you have uh, benign, benign stimulant. Benign, benign, st benign usually, uh, it's uh, almost, uh, almost never proceed to malignant lesion. Lah. However, there are some reported cases, but uh, it, is very ex it is very, very rare. Lah. Uh, for benign stimulants, you have, uh, a, it, we, you, you have, uh, possibility to proceed with malignant lesion. However, it is a uh, very low chance. Usually, it's less than 5%. For pre-malignant lesion, uh, as in this topic, uh, you have this keratosis. Lah. Uh, what I uh, said just now is uh, as, uh, actinic keratosis, arsenical keratosis, and also pulvar keratosis. For inside to carcinoma, 
is actually uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a step uh, before the malignant lesion. Basically, in histology, you have uh, characteristic of uh, carcinoma, but without invasion. Usually, it has uh, atypia, uh, full thickness dysplasia, but there is no invasion. For malignant, usually you have uh, invasion, lah, and you have a uh, tendency to uh, metastasis. So, uh, I will mention this uh, in this lecture. I will highlight only this on these three, lah, pre malignant lesion inside to carcinoma and also malignant lesion. So for pre-malignant lesion, uh, pre-malignant lesion is defined as uh, benign lesions with potential for transformation to malignant lesion. Uh, for now, the pre-malignant lesion uh, include uh, only three, as I mentioned earlier, actinic keratosis, arsenical keratosis, and also pulvar keratosis. For actinic keratosis, it is defined as intraepithelial neoplastic lesion that may progress to squamous cell carcinoma or actually it may spontaneously regress. Uh, etiological and risk factor is a cumulative intermittent sun exposure, UV radiation, chronic immunosuppression, uh, arsenical exposure, PUVA therapy, uh, chronic cutaneous inflammation. Usually, uh, if let's say the exposure for arsenic and PUVA is not uh, as much to uh, pro to progress to arsenical keratosis or pulvar keratosis, it may also lead to actinic keratosis. So for clinical features, uh, it is uh, common in sun exposed region uh, and in fair skin individu individuals and also mostly involving male. Incidence is increasing with advancing age. The side involvement usually face lower lip. In lower lip, uh, the lesion is called actinic colitis, uh, and it it can also involve the bald scalp, lateral neck, forearm, dorsal hands, uh, lower legs, and trunk. For clinical morphology, it's usually commonly present as scaly erythematous patch or plaque. Uh, usually, when you palpate, you have this sandpaper like. Uh, consistency and usually it's measuring about 2 to 10 mm in diameter lah. so often there are multiple lesion uh, with background of uh, uh, chronic sun damage and this uh, multiple lesion uh, usually sometimes it has flesh colored and yeah uh, as I mentioned usually there has this uh, background of chronic sun damage uh, this is the clinical uh, morphology of the actinic keratosis. So you can see here is a uh, erythematous uh, plug here. Uh, it is uh, scaly in nature and if you have chance to palpate this lesion, uh, you can feel like a sandpaper uh, because of the excessive scaling of the skin. So if you take biopsy on that region, uh, these are the characteristic biopsy of the region. So, uh, in the biopsy of actinic keratosis, you have uh, alternating parakeratosis and autokeratosis due to sparing of the appendageal keratin. Here is the appendages. Here, up here is the keratin part. So, uh, usually at the appendageal area, you have this uh, sparing of uh, keratin, uh, meaning to say uh, there is hyperkeratosis but there is no parakeratosis. So this hyperkeratosis without parakeratosis is also known as autokeratosis. So uh, in alternating one, you have parakeratosis. Parakeratosis means you have uh, retain of nucleus in the keratin layer. Here in the keratin layer, usually there is maturation and when it mature in normal skin, usually you don't have nucleus. But here you have uh, nucleus. So this phenomenon is known as parakeratosis in histology. So there is again alternating 
parakeratosis and autokeratosis and beneath the parakeratosis area here you can see there is a uh, there is a disordered maturation or you can say it's there is a dysplasia meaning uh, you have loss of skin maturation usually the cell uh, have some form of pleomorphism pleomorphism means variation in size and its nucleus usually a bit enlarged. Some can have prominent nucleoli. So uh, in this uh, classical uh, histological features, you can diagnose actinic keratosis. So again, uh, this uh, is actually one of the most uh, one of the precursor lesion. So the treatment of actinic keratosis, as I mentioned earlier, it may regress spontaneously, remain stable, or may progress to squamous cell carcinoma. So the treatment usually, uh, usually aim to remove the affected area and avoiding scars or other disfiguring marks. Uh, so uh, the form of treatment usually you can use cryotherapy or topical treatment using 5 fluorouracil imiquimod, or diclofenac. So this treatment usually destroyed the affected layer of epidermis. Uh, the outermost layer will be uh, will be uh, taken off by this uh, topical treatment, and usually it cures the actinic keratosis. So other localized treatment, uh, they may do a photodynamic therapy, laser surgery, chemical peeling, and also uh, some uh, plastic surgeon may do a shave excision touch or electro desiccation. Uh, annual rate of malignant transformation is less than 1 per 1,000 cases and usually it's higher among higher risk cases. Uh, higher risk cases usually is a higher cumulative uh, chronic sun damage lah, and also higher UV radiation uh, exposure. So uh, then you have uh, the second one uh, of the premalignant lesion, uh, you have arsenical keratosis. So it's defined as hyperkeratotic lesion that occurs in patients with previous exposure to arsenic. Uh, epidemiology, uh, usually the lesion may develop after latency pre period of 20 to 30 years after initial exposure. Uh, usually exposure is uh, systemic. Um, Look, uh, usually, it's involved the palm, lateral surface of fingers, soles, heels, and toes. So, for clinical morphology, you have melanosis. Melanosis is a dark, uh, dark pigmentation of the skin, followed by yellowish, here yellowish, pinpoint verrucous pap papules. Uh, it's usually two to ten mm in diameter. Okay. So uh, histologically, arsenical keratosis, uh, you have uh, full thickness atypia of epidermis. Uh, in actinic keratosis, usually the dysplasia uh, varies. Usually some have uh, lower one-third, some up to middle one-third, and uh, very rarely you have full thickness dysplasia. For arsenical keratosis, usually it has uh, full thickness dysplasia with dysregulated granular layer. Here, the granular layer, the dark area at the uh, at the surface below the keratin layer, you have some uh, thickened, some lost. So this called dysregulated granular layer, and also you have uh, within the Epidermis, you have uh, vacualization, vacualization of the cells, uh, meaning uh, the cytoplasm is uh, vacuolated, uh, and usually it's uh, clear uh, when you see the under uh, microscope. It is uh, it uh, clear in color lah, uh, which is helpful, but it is not a diagnostic features, uh, and of course you have this. Uh, hyperkeratosis as well. So the treatment, it may grow over the years uh, and can progress to uh, squamous cell carcinoma. 
when this lesion progress to squamous cell carcinoma, usually uh, the presentation is late and usually it's metastatic. Uh, and uh, arsenic keratosis uh, usually can be treated with cryotherapy, curatage, and diatomy. Or if numerous, you can use a topical imiquimod and oral acid retin. <coughs> and um, if, let's say, uh, this lesion uh, pro progress to pain, bleeding, fissuring, and ulceration, um, it's a predict predicting factor for progression to squamous cell carcinoma, early predicting uh, predicting factor lah. Uh, the last one for uh, pre-malignant keratosis, you have puva keratosis. So puva keratosis is a hyperkeratotic lesion that occurs after prolonged exposure of sorelin and ultraviolet A therapy. Uh, so what is puva or also uh, or uh, sorelin and ultraviolet A therapy? is actually a therapy used to treat psoriasis uh, and some cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. Uh, however, uh, prolonged exposure might lead to puva keratosis. So, uh, usually it is a dose dependent and the risk acquiring the lesion uh, is about 2 to 5%. Uh, transformation to squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma incidence is 15 to 30 percent after five to eight years exposure so the area affected area usually is uh, at the puva treated skin uh, clinical morphology you have raised papule with broad based scaly warty appearances so uh, as i mentioned earlier uh, the indication of puva therapy therapy is uh, psoriasis dermatitis vitiligo polymorphic light eruption and cutaneous t-cell lymphoma however uh, if uh, it is uh, it is uh, not monitored properly, it can lead to puva keratosis. So, uh, what are the histological features of puva keratosis? The classical uh, histological feature, uh, you can see uh, there is a prominent atypia at the basal layer. Means at the basal layer, you can see here, uh, this is the atypia, means the nucleus uh, is enlarged and it is variable in size you can see here at the middle part the nucleus is smaller at the basal part you have uh, enlarged nucleus with prominent nucleoli you can see here the dot in the center is the nucleoli uh, and there is a focal uh, squamatization uh, means there is a, uh, some of the some of the cells have this uh, eosinophilic uh, dense eosinophilic cytoplasm uh, which is uh, resembles squamous lah, uh, means a characteristic of squamous so it's called uh, squamatization and uh, usually the squamous cell shows uh, again a loss of polarity and dismaturation uh, with variable increase uh, variable uh, pleomorphism means variable size and usually it's enlarged however the granular layer usually it's retained usually it's normal lah, the granular layer and you have also this uh, keratin layer so the treatment uh, usually the most important thing is cessation of puva treatment and usually uh, in textbook usually exposure to more than 350 puva treatment increase the risk of uh, squamous cell carcinoma so when uh, as i mentioned usually the treatment most important is cessation of the puva treatment okay we go on to squamous cell carcinoma in situ it is an in situ lesion as i mentioned earlier uh, it is uh, defined as squamous cell carcinoma confined to epidermis and superficial adnexal epithelium in other words it is uh, this full thickness dysplasia is almost morphologically is almost like squamous cell carcinoma but there is no invasion so the epidermis shows full thickness uh, dysplasia lah. Uh, this lesion also known as bowen disease uh, 
uh, median age of presentation usually more than 60 years old more common in white and in higher cumulative sun exposure other risk factors include long-term immunosuppressive treatment high level uh, of arsenic in drinking water sorry this is a typo this is actually off so uh, etiological factor uh, means etiological of the squamous cell carcinoma in situ uh, include uv radiation exposure as a result of sunlight or tanning uh, sunlight exposure or tanning bed exposure to radiotherapy and photochemotherapy hpv infection usually this uh, this is the pathogenic uh, pathogenic uh, organism, the human papilloma virus, particularly in sun shielded area, means the area which which is which are not sun exposed. Usually it involves peri angual, uh, near uh, peri nail bed and also genital skin. Uh, and other etiological factor is arsenic ingestion. So it's involved uh, commonly lower limb, head and neck, hands, and less commonly sub-angual, peri -angual, and genital, as well as peri region. Uh, clinical morphology, usually it is solitary, means it is uh, only one, and it is slow-growing, uh, scaly. Here you can see it's very scaly, and erythematous uh, patch of plaque. So, if you take biopsy in that area, uh, you can see here is full thickness dysplasia of the epidermal layer. Here you can see uh, there is uh, thicken of epidermal layer or also known as acanthosis. Uh, and you can see there is a loss of polarity, means the surface maturation is lost. And you have this this plastic cell, means the cells are increased in size, and also have here you can see it's have uh, hyperchromatic and prominent nucleoli, and usually this cell is involving full thickness of the skin from basal layer up to the. Uh, from basal layer up to below the granular layer. Here you can see granular layer is absent. And above it, usually you have uh, parakeratotic, uh, parakeratotic keratin layer. Lah. So this is squamous cell carcinoma in situ. At the below part, you, it is well defined. There is no evidence of invasion to suggest squamous cell carcinoma. Okay. So the treatment usually treated by excision uh, and approximately 3 to 5 cases of all in situ uh, squamous cell carcinoma or Bowen's disease progress to invasive squamous cell carcinoma. So moving on uh, to squamous cell carcinoma, it is defined as malignancy of epidermal keratinocyte uh, with various degree of differentiation. Uh, particularly illustrate the squamous cell of stratum spinosum. So meaning you have this uh, full thickness dysplasia and you have the variable degree of differentiation uh, to imitate the uh, squamous cell of stratum spinosum. If it is looks uh, almost similar, you have uh, individual keratinization, you have uh, intercellular bridges so it is uh, well differentiated if it is does not resemble at all usually it is poorly differentiated i will explain it more uh, later on so epidemiology is the second most common skin cancer uh, after basal cell carcinoma mostly occurs in sun exposed skin of elderly more common in lighter skin pigmentation it means more common in uh, fair individuals uh, mainly caused by so the pathogenesis is mainly caused by UV light damage uh, it is higher risk in patient with xeroderma pigmentosum uh, so uh, usually it 
uh, impairs the ability to repair UV induced sun damage. So UV radiation usually induce TP53 mutation. Uh, this is the most common one. And other tumor suppressor gene uh, mutation, uh, notch 1, notch 2. And uh, some have activating mutation of Keras and HRAS. In immunosuppression, usually HPV infection plays an important role. So where are the common sites? Usually it's involved the sun exposed area, face, lips, ears, balding scalp, arm, trunk and legs. So the hair actually protect this lesion. So please don't uh, go bald. Although some of the uh, trend is going bald nowadays. So uh, other localization, usually in HPV associated lesion, it commonly involves the distal digits and genitalia. In situation, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in Bowen's disease, it appears as hyperkeratotic lesion. With invasion, it has progressive growth, and this lesion will pros progress to hyperkeratotic nodules and may ulcerate. So lymph node uh, spread in primary root of metastasis. So you can see here, in this picture, you have this uh, nodular lesion. Uh, with hyperkeratosis uh, and uh, you have this post auricular lymph nodes here. So this is uh, invasive uh, squamous cell carcinoma. Mostly it's a late stage because there is a lymph node involvement. So histologically, uh, it is basically same as Bowen disease but with invasion. So you have this uh, blunt type uh, intradermal invasion means uh, it is uh, like a pushing uh, border but it's not well defined so it's a blunt invasion it has a full thickness dysplasia pleomorphism and loss of uh, loss of maturation lah, surface maturation so this is blunt invasion here you can see on the left side on the right side you have infiltrative invasion usually the cells are uh, the nest of the dysplastic cell are broken to smaller parts and usually it's more infiltrative uh, and it's destroy more of the soft tissue in the dermis area. And here you can see also there is uh, inflammation uh, surrounding the invasive region. Okay. So this inflammation is uh, mainly is a lymphocytes. Lah. It's uh, also uh, one of the hallmark of cancer. Lah. Usually you have uh, invasion and within this invasion you have inflammatory reaction as well as uh, tissue reaction. Some may show uh, desmoplastic stroma. Desmoplastic stroma usually means, uh, usually you can see uh, bluish discoloration of the uh, the soft tissue around the tumor. So the grading of squamous cell carcinoma, uh, usually the grading used uh, nuclear uh, pleomorphism and mitosis and also keratinization and intercellular bridges. As I mentioned earlier, uh, it's uh, the if it is mimical of uh, stratum spinosum layer of squamous cell. Uh, it's uh, more, uh, it will have the characterization and intercellular bridges, so it's more of well differentiated. But if it is uh, nearly absent, it's poorly differentiated. However, if there is uh, nuclear pleomorphism and mitosis uh, abundant, usually it is uh, classified as poorly differentiated. And if the nuclear pleomorphism uh, and mitosis is scanty or absent, usually we classify as well differentiated. So this grading applies to any squamous cell carcinoma of head and neck, lung, abdominal organs, and also the skin. So uh, as a rule of thumb, uh, the closely it resembles uh, the spinous, uh, stratum spinosum normal squamous epithelium it is uh, more well it is uh, it is uh, well differentiated whereas if uh, 
you cannot uh, you cannot identify it is almost uh, you cannot differentiate whether it's squamous cell or not usually it is poorly differentiated uh, anything in between is moderately differentiated uh, so it is uh, generally emphasized nuclear uh, features and mitosis basically nuclear features is more important uh, to assign the grades rather than the keratinization alone so uh, for HPV related uh, squamous cell carcinoma of oropharynx usually we don't grade the tumor because usually it's uh, it has a better prognosis as for adenocarcinoma grade is assigned based on least differentiated area uh, in contrast to adenocarcinoma, the grade does not appear to be strong predictive factor, particularly in head and neck region. So other variant of squamous cell carcinoma is keratoacanthoma, acantholytic squamous cell carcinoma, spindle squamous cell carcinoma, verrucous squamous cell carcinoma, adenosquamous carcinoma, clear cell squamous cell carcinoma. So treatment of squamous cell carcinoma, uh, usually you, we do a white uh, excision, means you excise the lesion with uh, white margin. Uh, if it is early phase, uh, less than 1% will have a metastasis to regional lymph node at diagnosis. As I mentioned, the treatment is white excision. Uh, the features which favors uh, high risk prognostic factor usually the tumor thickness more than 2 mm clock level 4 or 5 perineural invasion primary site at ear or lip and also poor differentiation for uh, tumor thickness and clock level uh, I will explain it more on the melanocytic lesion uh, in the next lecture basically it's Use for tumor thickness, we use breast low thickness. For clock level, we uh, we classify based on the involvement of which region of the skin. Okay, for basal cell carcinoma, it's a carcinoma derived from basal cell of the interfollicular epidermis and or hair follicle. Uh, it's most common cutaneous malignancy, more common in male, higher incidence in lighter skin population. Etiology most important is UV radiation. It is uh, increasing in incidence at 30,000 hours of cumulative sun exposure and flattens. Means uh, if individuals has uh, more than 30,000, say for example 40,000, the incidence is similar with the individuals who has exposure at 30,000 hours. In contrast to squamous cell carcinoma, uh, which the longer you exposed to sun exposure, the higher chances you have uh, squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, other etiologies are ionizing radiation and systemic arsenic exposure. So pathogenesis of uh, basal cell carcinoma. Uh, so it is basically uh, involve the hedgehog signaling pathway so aberrant activation of hedgehog signaling pathway is the hallmark of BCC pathogenesis so basically uh, this uh, pathway uh, usually the PTCH1 gene inhibits the hedgehog signaling pathway in unbound configuration so it function as a tumor suppressor gene so uh, ptch1 pathway is a patch 1 membrane receptor uh, patch 1 membrane receptor so the gene encodes it is uh, basically uh, if let's say the gene is mutated uh, you have abnormal activation of this pathway when there is a hedgehog extracellular hedgehog ligand bind to the PTCH1. So it's uh, overly expressed. When it is overly expressed, it uh, will, will activate the 
the pathway of smoothen uh, protein and uh, after that this protein will activate the uh, suppressor of fused and uh, zinc finger protein GLI-1 to produce to express GLI-1 protein and this GLI-1 protein will target the gene uh, GLI-1 PTCH1 and hedgehog intercell interacting protein so when it is activated you have uh, you have uh, over expression of PTCH1 as well as GLI-1 so uh, more than 90% of uh, sporadic uh, BCC harbor mutation on at least one LL. Usually for it to be um, fully mutated, you must have a uh, double hit, which is two LL mutation. But for sporadic, sporadic means it is not inherited uh, BCC. So in non-inherited BCC, uh, you have at least uh, one LL mutation but in inherited BCC uh, which uh, usually uh, you uh, in you can see that in Gollin syndrome which is autosomal dominant disorder caused by inherited defect in PTCH1 gene it is associated with familial BCC so uh, usually you have uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, PTCH is overexpressed in BCC. So usually you have one hit uh, and then you have second hit by UV light damage. So this UV light damage is uh, causing the TP53 mutation and common in both familial and sporadic tumor. So these are the references. So uh, BCC usually involve the head and neck region. Head is most common um, and also can involve trunk and less commonly genital region, nail unit, palm and sole. Classical presentation, it has pearly telangiectatic papules which may erode and ulcerate. So here you have this uh, smooth pearly papules. Uh, you have this tele telangiectatic vessel means the vessel is uh, uh, ectatic means it's uh, dilated lah. Uh, and also uh, it's pearly in color uh, so as uh, it's progress usually this may ulcerate uh, so uh, some may present early like this some may present as ulceration uh, ulcerating lesion so as you can see here these are the typical, tumor, uh, the typical histological features of basal cell carcinoma. Uh, usually, you have this uh, malignant basaloid cell. Uh, usually, it attached to the undersurface of epidermis. Uh, but in this uh, picture, you cannot see it. But commonly, it's attached to undersurface of epidermis. And then, these cells... Uh, usually it's basaloid. Basaloid means it's look bluish and uh, it's infiltrating the stroma. Uh, characteristic, you have this peripheral palisading, means you have like a nice fencing at the periphery region. And this, uh, in between the tumor and the stroma, you have this uh, characteristic uh, retraction artifact uh, it is uh, actually artifact due to sectioning uh, during processing of the uh, of these slides so uh, this tumor in the higher magnification you can see it is as I mentioned it is bluish hyperchromatic uh, and some with prominent nucleoli here some and you have this mitosis here so, uh, this is the characteristic features of basal cell carcinoma. So, there are few variants of basal, basal cell carcinoma and its prognosis differs. Uh, for lower risk, uh, it's nodular basal cell carcinoma, superficial basal cell carcinoma, pigmented basal cell carcinoma, 
infundibular cystic basal cell carcinoma and fibroepithelial basal cell carcinoma. Higher risk is basal squamous carcinoma, sclerosing or morphic basal cell carcinoma, infiltrating basal cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma with sarcomatoid differentiation, and micronodular basal cell carcinoma. These are the higher risk. So primary cure is white excision. 40% of patients will develop recurrence within 5 years. Advanced lesion may ulcerate and extensive local invasion of bone and facial sinus may occur if the lesion are left neglected. Metastasis is rare. Uh, so these are the reason why we need to learn the, uh, the pathogenesis because the treatment uh, in the future is involved, involving targeted treatment. So from what uh, we learn from the pathway, so the, uh, the treatment involve inhibit uh, the hedgehog pathway so that you can target only the uh, tumor cells and sparing the uh, normal uh, proliferating cell. Uh, so you have less, uh, less side effects of the chemotherapy and you have higher efficiency to kill the tumor, uh, even in advanced or metastatic tumor. So these are my reference, uh, and thank you uh, for your attention.